Hey, what's up, everybody? Andy here. Um, just saw Ruth's video. Great job on uh, the In Your Eyes groove. Awesome. Uh, if you get a chance, check out. the. There's a live version out there with Manu Kache playing drums on there. Phenomenal. He, he changes it up a little bit, and it's, it's really cool. But... Um, I kind of wanted to answer your question about hi-hat stand uh, stuff. Uh, hi-hat stands are pretty complicated beasts, so I thought I would just kind of break down the hi-hat stand for you guys, uh, anybody else who's interested in how it works. Uh, when I first started out, it was kind of a mystery when something would go awry, you didn't know exactly <laughs> how to fix it. Um, so the most important part of all this is knowing how your gear works, um, sitting down with it, taking it all apart, putting it back together. Uh, it's very important because when you get to the point where you're you're playing with a band, you're playing live, and something does go wrong, uh, these things vibrate loose while you're playing or on, in the trailer on the way to the gig or in your car or wherever you're hauling this stuff. So to be able to know really what it is that, that is wrong instantly and to be able to fix it is super important. Uh, you'd be in the middle of a song, something will fail, and you'll have the time between two songs to, to fix it. So... Um, I'll just start out here. Um, I brought my my hi hat sand out here, um, Iron Cobra. I like it. it it's a nice one. Um, but right here, you have the clutch. Um, most people pretty much know how that works. Um, you kind of think of it as like a sandwich. Between there, you have the the part to tighten it right here, and then on this other side, you also have another piece to tighten it. Now. Whether or not you have it super tight or super loose is going to uh, affect your sound when you're doing open hi-hat, like, you know, pss, pss sound stuff. Um, if you keep it real loose, you're going to get a different sound than real tight, and it's kind of up to you. I like to keep mine fairly tight just because that way they don't vibrate loose. Um, but again, uh, tighten. I like to tighten the bottom one so it's all the way tight and then adjust up here on this side um, so that you can actually... All, all of your looseness is, is controlled by this one up here so that this one's always tight. Okay, so with that being said on the clutch, <clears throat> I'm going to go up here, take this off. Um, now, this little thing down here, everybody thinks this is a mystery. I know I did. <laughs> I had no idea what it did, really. Um, what this does is this prevents airlock. Um, and a lot of the hi-hats out now they don't really get airlock because they have holes drilled in the bottom stuff like that uh, but there is mine for example can still get airlock because there is no holes in my hi-hats so um, you can tilt it a little bit so that what happens is the the hi-hats don't come together perfectly they're actually offset a little bit so you don't get that airlock in there um, now Ruth, the thing that was happening with yours, and I could see it right away, was right here. I'm going to pull this section off and go underneath. Um, I could see that this was happening because this whole this whole pole right here um, was, was jiggling around. And basically what you have here is this rod goes down into here and screws in tight. Now what they do, why they do this, is so you can break this down. Um, and carry it with the rest of your hardware. Otherwise, this would be one giant piece connecting to the to the board down there, and that would be kind of a pain. So what I would do, uh, if I was you, Ruth, is take a look at this, um, tighten it up if need be. Um, mine's a little tight right now, but uh, one of the best ways to tighten it is to actually get your hi-hat on here, um, clamp it down, and then tighten up here but I'll pop it loose just so I can show you guys what's going on with this one. Doo, doo, doo. I'm trying to do this all one-handed while I hold a camera, so I apologize for that. Um, I'll just pull this off here. Now what happens then is you get this end right here um, and that end right there. So for breaking this down, it's really, really nice. You can take all this stuff off. Um, breaks down nice, compact, everything like that. Um, so, that's, that is, I would almost guarantee that's what's going on with, uh, with yours, Ruth, is it's coming loose down here. So just tighten it up right there, put that tube back on, and you should be good to go. Uh, another thing I just wanted to go over, too, is uh, tension down here. Um, it's different hi-hat stands look different. Uh, this one has kind of a step-up ratchet look down here. Um, See if I can give you a shot. 
And I have mine fairly tight because I like to do some fast hi-hat stuff. I, I suggest keeping it tight, but it, your style is your style, whatever whatever you want to do. But um, if you're feeling like if you get, end up getting new hi-hats or something and it's like they barely lift up when you take your, your foot off the pedal, that's where you're going to want to adjust. And you can go up for tighter or down for, for uh, not quite as tight, not quite as much pressure. Uh, other than that, uh, as far as this hi-hat stand goes, there's some other adjustments uh, that can be made within here, um, some of this, the base stuff here. Not super important just because this is, a, like I said, this is a pretty advanced hi-hat stand with a lot of different options. Um, you're not going to find that on a lot of them. But uh, other than that, yeah, that's pretty much the anatomy of what what uh, you're going to deal with on, on a day-to-day -day basis with, with hi-hat stands. So I hope that helped, Ruth. And if anybody has any other questions about that kind of stuff, obviously it's going to be kind of depending on what hi-hat stand you have, but every hi-hat stand I've ever seen has the components that I just explained. So any other questions, just leave me a message. All right. Thanks, everybody.